So this is the all new Acer ALG. On paper, it's marketed as a budget-friendly powerhouse packed with the 12th generation Intel Core i5 and Nvidia's RTX graphics. But here's the real question. Can it actually deliver in day-to-day -day use? We have got some solid hardware in here. So today, we are diving deep to find out if this thin and light option can keep up with the real-world demands. So let's break it down. But before moving further, let's talk about these specs. Powering this machine is the Intel Core i5 12450H. Featuring 8 cores, 4 performance cores for heavy lifting and 4 efficiency cores to keep things smooth. On the graphic fronts, you are getting a 4GB NVIDIA RTX 2050 with a TGP of 55W. Now the display, a 15.6 inch Full HD panel but with a 60Hz refresh rate, which might feel a bit underwhelming for a device like this. For storage, it packs the standard 512GB of M.2 NVMe SSD and for the RAM, a 16GB DDR4 RAM, though it's in single channel which may limit its full potential. But specs don't tell the full story. So let's start with the full review. So this model is a bit lighter, tipping the scales at around 1.99 kilos, plus it's slim, ranging between 20 and 25 mm thick, making it quite slick compared to the some other options. Compared to the Nitro and the Aspire series, this one leans toward a non-gamer look like the Aspire. For its price, this laptop looks impressive. It boasts a minimalistic design with a two-tone finish. We have got the steel grey edition here where the upper half is grey and the lower half is black. The top panel is slick with just the Acer logo standing out. The 3D cuts on the surface add a touch of elegance while avoiding fingerprints. One thing I really liked is the minimal flex in the both the top of the lid and the keyboard deck, which contributes to a solid feel. In terms of build quality, it feels durable and well constructed, combining metal and polycarbonate. The top cover is aluminium and the rest of the body is polycarbonate. The hinges are pretty strong as well, with a slight bounce when you open the lid. You can even open it with one hand quite easily, thanks to that solid construction I mentioned earlier. Now let's move on to the keyboard and trackpad and see how they stack up. The lower half features a full-size RGB backlight with comfortable keyboard and decent key travel, similar to what you find in the Nitro V15 series. While it's not the premium keyboard out there, it gets the job done and is reasonable for the price. You can adjust the backlighting effect using the built-in software, which is a nice touch. The touchpad is of average size and responsiveness, offering basic tactile feedback. It's not the most accurate, but considering the budget-friendly price point, it's acceptable. Moving on to the ports. The backside features a Type-C 3.2 Gen 2, a mini display port, and a power port. On the left side, you will find a USB 3.1, a USB 2.0, a 3.5mm audio jack, and a 3.5mm mic jack. The right side includes a RJ45 port, a USB 3.2 Gen 2, and a micro SD card slot. Unfortunately, the Type-C port doesn't support power delivery or display port output. However, I do wish they had provided a proper SD card instead of this micro SD card slot. Overall, there is no significant cost cutting in terms of ports. Most essential ones are available. However, I do wish they had provided a proper SD card slot instead of just a micro SD card slot. The display on this laptop is pretty average, similar to what you find on the most laptops under 60,000. It's 15.6 inch panel with 300 nits of brightness which makes it nearly unusable outdoors. But it's more than sufficient for indoor use. In terms of color accuracy, it covers 45% of NTSC and 63% of sRGB. So it's not ideal for the color accurate video or photo editing. One downside is that the display only offers a 60Hz refresh rate panel, which feels a quite low for a laptop like this. They should have really gone for a 120Hz instead. Turning the laptop around, I noticed the practical design elements Acer has put in place. The back panel has a sturdy rubber padding and I spot intake vents and two bottom firing speakers. What is stand out is here, Acer has moved the exhaust vents from underneath the display to the back and the sides, which gives it a distinct gaming look. One of the standout features of this laptop is its processor. It's equipped with a Intel i5-12450H. This CPU packs 8 cores, out of which 4 are performance ones and the other 4 are efficient cores, along with 12 threads. All 8 cores in this processor are based on the Zen 3 Plus architecture, clocking in between 3.3 GHz to 4.4 GHz. Even these specs, this CPU is an absolute beast for its price. But before we dive deeper, let's take a look at how it performs in the various benchmarks to really understand its capabilities. If you are into video editing, the i5-12450H signs in tasks like rendering previews or applying effects. Thanks to its strong single core performance, it scores 1598 in Cinebench R23, outperforming the Ryzen's 1492. But when it comes to the heavier multi-core tasks like 
Full video rendering, the Ryzen's 10,960 scores leaves the i5's 9,951 in the dust. So while i5 can handle most consumer level editing tasks just fine, if you are doing just bigger projects, the Ryzen might be the better bet. For 3D rendering, the Dual 450H does a decent job with a moderate task. But when you dive into complex 3D models or heavy animation projects, the Ryzen's multi-core performance starts to pull ahead. In programs like the Blender, the Ryzen's extra power really makes a difference, especially for demanding projects. The Dual 450H holds its ground in data science applications, handling the data processing and machine learning tasks well, with a Cinebench multi-core score of 9,951 and a Geekbench multi-core score of 8,489. For music production, the Dual 450H really flexes its muscle in the single core task, running virtual instruments or effect-heavy tracks, no problem. The Geekbench score of around 2,246, it outperforms the Ryzen's 1,934 score. However, if you are working with a ton of tracks or plugins at the same time, the Ryzen might be a better option for handling all that multi-core processing. In motion graphics work in Adobe After Effects, the 12450PH can manage moderate tasks just fine. But when you are working on complex compositions with tons of layers and effects, the Ryzen's multi-core power starts to become more noticeable. Especially if you are using a dedicated GPU for heavy duty work. So here's the bottom line. If you are mainly focused on single threaded tasks like web browsing, light content creation or general office work, the Dial 450H is a fantastic option. The choice is all yours. So this part is only for people watching from Dehradun, Uttarakhand and especially for Dehradun people. This laptop is provided to us by Digital Stores which is one of the biggest laptop shop in Dehradun. Here you can find laptops from a lot of brands. If you want to know more about the store, then all the details are given below in the description box. So make sure to check it out. Now let's shift gears and see how this performs in gaming. First up we ran Forza Horizon 5 at 1080p on medium settings and it averaged around 65 fps. That's pretty decent and should provide a smooth gaming experience. Next we tested Red Dead Redemption 2 at 1080p and let's just say it was just struggling. It barely managed to hit 18 fps which is far from playable. Even if it reached 30 fps it would have been tough to enjoy. So this result is quite disappointing. Then we moved on to the GTA 5. Running it at 1080p on very high settings, here the FPS dropped to a below average 33, which isn't ideal but is still somewhat playable. Finally, we tried The Witcher 3 at 1080p on ultra settings. It managed to give us a playable FPS of around 35. It's not the perfect, but it should be sufficient for an enjoyable experience. But what about the battery? For the battery, it went from 100% to 20% in about 4 hours. During this time, I was surfing the web, watching YouTube and streaming a movie. I'm avoiding talking about the backup for gaming because it's not a good idea to even consider gaming on battery. The sound from the speakers is not bad, but there is no bass or other features that are often found in the top models of the laptops. If you connect good speakers or a pair of good headphones, everything sounds quite decent. And now for the SSD, these are the SSD's speed which are pretty impressive and holds up well with today's workload. Now regarding the thermal performance, the dual fan cooling system does a good job. I did a heavy overall system stress test using Prime95 and Firmark that simulate heavy CPU tasks and extensive rendering to push the system to its limits. During this, CPU fluctuated around 89 to 96 degrees Celsius and for the GPU, it reached a maximum of 86 degrees Celsius. Keep in mind, these figures are only possible during these type of extensive workloads. So in real usage, you will see temperatures 3 to 4 degrees lower than these. So what's my take on this laptop? I have to say, I'm impressed with the design and the build quality. It's got a sleek, modern look and feels solid in hand. The minimalistic style is a nice touch. But here's the real problem. I'm a bit surprised by the 35W RTX 2050. For the same price, you can snag something like the iDepad Gaming 3 which packs a better GPU. If you are after an all-rounder for casual use and light gaming, this laptop will do the job. However, if you are looking for a boost in performance and gaming powers, the iDepad might be a better bet. If you are on the edge of buying this laptop, look at these factors carefully. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Don't forget to hit that like button, drop a comment and subscribe for more. Catch you in the next video. Bye bye.